Hey everyone, I wanted to do a short video today and show you guys how to connect some of Blackmagic's higher end cameras to the A10 Mini switchers and take advantage of the camera control features, so adjusting exposure, controlling colors, and so forth. So initially this was not possible because these cameras don't have HDMI outputs. They only have SDI connections on them, and so there was no way to connect them for the camera control features. Uh, but since then, Blackmagic has released a new, a new product. It's called the uh, bi-directional SDI HDMI 3G microconverter and this product actually makes it possible to control these bigger cameras from the A10 mini series and and be able to have full control over them just like you do with the pocket cinema cameras so walk you through this uh, it's not too hard and it shouldn't take too long so anyway so yeah you do have to have this uh, microconverter in order to make this happen this is essentially the bridge between the HDMI connections that are on the A10 mini series and the SDI connections that are on these bigger cameras so First thing we're going to do is we're going to want to connect up power to the microconverter. So I've got a universal power adapter that I'm just going to plug into here. So USB-C connection on here goes into USB power on the device. And then we're going to want to connect the HDMI output on this device to our switcher. And we only have to connect up the output. The input is not necessary. We only really need to get video from the camera into our switcher. So take connect the HDMI cable to the back of my a10 Mini Extreme, and then we're going to want to connect some SDI cables. So, to the SDI input on the microconverter, we're going to run a cable from the camera, and as you can probably guess, that's going to go to the SDI output. So my cable gets untangled here. All right, so the top output on this is an Ursa Mini. By the way, I've had this for several years now. So the top connection on the back of the Ursa Mini is the SDI output. And then we're going to use another SDI cable to connect the input. Now the reason we need to connect up the input on the camera is that's how the control signals are actually sent. Uh, the control signals for controlling exposure and tally and color are sent via the SDI return line in this case. So. I'm going to take the SDI input of the camera, and that signal is going to come from this bi-directional microconverter. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. All right, with that, we actually got the physical connections done. And so this time, at this point in time, we're going to want to configure the camera in order to work with this. So go ahead and power on the camera here. And I wish I had a, a better view of this for you guys, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make that work. So. Uh, there we go. Turn on the camera. And we need to tweak some settings here, so we're going to go into the menu. And this is going to be similar on all the cameras. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to go the, to the monitor main SDI output. And we need to come over to this page and make sure it's set for 1080p. Uh, by default, these are very often set to 2160 because these cameras are mostly 4K and higher. However, these bi-directional converters do not understand Ultra, ultra high def, and so we need to make sure we put the output on HD. You can still record in camera in 4, 4K, 4.6K, 12K, whatever whatever format you want, but the output on the SDI has to be in 1080p in order for this to work. All right, so the other, the other thing we're going to want to set up here is the ATEM camera number, and that's done over here in the setup menu, and we'll have to go to the second screen here. So that this option here on the upper left is ATEM camera ID. Now I've got my HDMI plugged into input one on the switcher, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this at one, but if we wanted to put that on any of the other inputs, we'd wanna make sure they have the corresponding number in the ATEM camera ID as well. So if I was gonna use HDMI input four on my switcher, then I'd wanna set my ATEM camera ID to four. All right, with that, uh, that gets us pretty close. The other things we're going to want to check, if we want remote control over things like exposure, we're going to make sure that we don't have that set on any of the auto features. So we're going to go into shutter, frames per second, iris, and make sure that no auto features are turned on. So there's an auto exposure that's available here under the shutter speed. Make sure that that is turned off, otherwise we won't be able to control that from the switcher. So with that, we are connected and we can go into the ATEM software control in order to start making changes. All right, so um, let you guys see 
what's going on here. So bottom left corner is the video signal coming from the switcher itself. So I can switch that to multi-view or switch it to camera one or whatever the case may be. We're going to be tweaking the set settings uh, in the ATEM software control software. So you see that on the top of your screen. And I've got this numbered as camera number one. So we're going to make settings changes here under the camera tab under camera number one. So let's actually start at the bottom here because this is a kind of a, a more natural place to start. So first setting that we're going to want to be adjusting here is the gain. And in terms of what the camera calls this, this is actually the ISO. Uh, this is basically, they're, called, they're the same thing. ISO and gain are the same thing. They're just, they're just called different things in different worlds. And so if we want to adjust the ISO on the camera, we'll actually adjust that through the gain setting. The numbers are different, so you're going to want to watch. Right now my camera is set for ISO 200, and the gain is currently set for zero. But if I start cranking that up, if I go up to, say, plus 6 dB, there, there we go, my camera just switched to ISO 400. And so if you want remote control over the camera, the camera's gain, or ISO, that's how you do it with a gain adjustment. Next thing we have over here is shutter speed. So I'm going to actually slow this down to 1 60th of a second. So as I make adjustments here in ATEM software control, you can see the corresponding changes being made on the camera. And then we've also got a setting for white balance. Now, this is actually right that if I wanted to change it, say if I wanted, if I needed to work under incandescent uh, color lighting, then I'd want to come over here and adjust that to somewhere in the neighborhood of about 3200. And you notice that the image from the camera is getting very blue because uh, the lighting I have here in my trailer is 5600 Kelvin. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust and put that back at 5600 there in that setting. So uh, we've also got control over other settings, but some of the settings that we would we want to control might not necessarily be available based on what equipment we have connected to the camera. Like for example, the this slider here is actually used to control the iris of the lens, but the lens that I'm, I have on here right now is, it's all, it's all manual. It's manual iris, manual, manual uh, focus. Uh, and, it's, and there's no zoom, it's a, it's a prime. And so we won't be able to control the iris with that. So if I move this up and down, you're not gonna see any change whatsoever on, on, on the lens, at least not when I move up and down. When I move left, left to right though, that changes the black point, And that is an electronic setting that we can actually control. So you will see, I think, uh, changes being made there. But just a straight up and down movement with a manual iris lens like I have on here, you won't see any change. If you have a lens with an electronic iris, say, say for example, if I was using a Canon EF lens on this camera, that would actually change the iris on the lens uh, for you as well. All right, let's take a look at a couple other things here. So uh, if I had an electronic focus lens, then I could also control the focus on this as well. So that's this slider here and there's an autofocus button down here. The autofocus on these cameras isn't very good, so I wouldn't necessarily count on that, but if, if you want to have control over the focus, that is done with this adjustment that's here. Again, requires a lens that has electronic focus capability. This one that I'm using here does not. It's manual focus only. With that, we can actually go and start messing with the color adjustments as well. So if I wanted to, say, for example, change the, the gamma, and I want to shift that more towards, say, red. So I'll put that on the gamma setting, and then I can grab the center here, and then just start dragging that up towards red. And you'll notice in the image coming from the camera that that has taken on a very strong red tint. Or I can go any other direction if I want it to be very blue or very green. That's done just by moving that around. Uh, or you can adjust the same thing in the numbers down below. So if I click on green and slide it to the left, that's reducing the amount of green that's coming through in the picture there. Um, but you can also adjust the lift as well. So this is what we talked about in the black point. So as I grab the white bar under lift, that's changing the, where the black point on the, on the camera is. And we can do that for any particular channel. So if we want to adjust and bring the green up on the black point, we can do, certainly do that as well. If we get in trouble, there is a reset button here. We can just click on this little round arrow and then choose what we want to reset. In this case, we want to reset all. 
So we've got some options there. And then we've also got this, this kind of hidden button here as well, it's the hamburger menu we we'll call that. And this gives you the option to say, say for example show color bars, you can turn that on and off. And we can control the amount of detail in the picture, so detail off, detail, default detail, medium detail, and high detail. All those features work. It's basically a sharpness control. Uh, so if we want to adjust the, sh the sharpness on the camera there as well, we certainly can do that. Now having this actually set up like this, uh, the camera actually does support tally. I've got it turned off on mine right now, but if I had it turned on, when I cut to that camera, it would actually show a red tally light on the front of the camera as well. So all of those features work with these cameras. I'm using the Ursa Mini here today, but these same features also work with the studio cameras, including the Micro Studio Camera 4K, which is the camera that I'm using for my overhead shot. I don't have it wired into this switcher, though, so I'm not able to control it from here, but I can certainly do that from my other ATEM uh, software control software as well. So anyway, that is about it. Uh, it's it's really cool that we have that ability. When when Blackmagic first announced the A10 Mini series and they had all these camera control features that were only going to work with the uh, pocket cinema cameras, it was actually kind of sad because some a lot of us have these uh, have made investments in these higher end cameras, and it would have been nice to be able to do that. And they have made that possible by adding the micro cinema, or sorry, the micro converter, uh, bi-directional SDI HDMI 3G version of their old micro converter series. This d device is actually what allows you to do, to do that. So you'll need one of those for each one of the cameras you want to control, uh, but it's certainly possible and and gives you some new capabilities that you wouldn't have otherwise with some of the older equipment. So anyway, if you have any questions about this, please leave those in the comment section down below. I'd also love to hear from you how you might actually be using this and which cameras you might be using it with and which ATEM mini uh, switcher you actually happen to have. I'd love to hear about that. I'd love to hear about your setups that you're using for video production. So anyway, uh, thanks everyone for watching and have a great day.